So, maybe you've seen the video where I made some walnuts on my homemade lathe. The old setup were pretty straightforward, but to actually be useful, it needed some upgrades. And first, there's this mini free jaw chuck. And then there's these bearings made for high speed. And how I'll use those, you'll see that later. I also have to change up the mounting situation for the drill to make it more stable. But first, it's demolition time. After taking the old lathe apart, I took a break to look at the mess I created and also to plan out how to proceed with the project since I didn't have any plans for this. So I picked up a board and I decided that making the tailstock would be a good place to start. But to figure out how tall the tailstock needed to be, I first needed to mount the drill onto its base, so I barely got started with the tailstock part of the project before putting it on pause again. Then I pranked myself. <laughs> then I used this metal dowel round bar thing and stuffed it into the chuck to kind of show where the chuck aims. And when it was about level, I used my precision wood block to determine whether or not it was. Then I marked it onto the tailstock base piece so I could drill a hole at the correct height. The hole will allow the tailstock piece to go through while still being supported by two bearings one on each side, and since it's supported on both sides, it's also reversible if you need more space or need to get the tailstock closer to the chuck. Now it was just a matter of putting it all together. And obviously, a static tailstock is no fun in a lathe, so I measured out a place to route a groove for it. To adjust and to lock the tailstock in place, I took this machine screw and mounted it in a block of wood that will go in a groove and kind of act like a T-nut. And to make sure the tailstock wouldn't sway to any side, I drilled and threaded a hole for a screw to go into, so it would help the tailstock stay aligned to the groove I made. And now I just had to go through the hassle of setting up my old plunge router to make a groove. And before that, I spent too much time sharpening my router bit. Then adjusting, double checking and preparing for the groove. No room for errors here, and I barely got started before I realized that I messed up because I forgot my mask. Always remember PPE, especially when it comes to dust. We, we often skip that part because, to be honest, it's the inner organs and you can't really see it, so it's like an, an invisible killer, if you may. It's one of the most important ones. Of course, all of them are important, but we tend to ignore our lungs for reasons I actually cannot comprehend. Well, enough rambling and drama. I went back and I put on my mask and I guess that's it. The groove was made and it wasn't even as bad or as hard as I made it look or sound like. And uh, here you see me route a slightly thinner groove in the middle of the big groove that I just routed. And I do need to expand it a bit in the future, make it longer, but that's a future me's problem. Moment of truth. Does it fit? Yes, it does. 
and it's stable as well, surprisingly. Then I just needed to make sure that the drill base was at the right place. So off with the tailstock, then checking if the drill is in the right place by aligning it with the groove that I made and holding it in place with a clamp so I can secure it. I took this old machine screw and I filed it down in the end to make a pretty straightforward tailstock piece thing and it's okay, it's doing its job, but an upgrade could be a three point piece instead and maybe I'll make that in the future along with some other upgrades, um, I don't know, depends on how much I'm gonna use this day. Then I drilled some holes in the drill base to store the chuck tightening pins for easy storage. Then back to the old router to route a T groove for a tool rest to go into and the plywood is just so tough routing through that it literally caught fire three times. If I could do it again, I would probably make two lines or two grooves instead of this U or C channel that I made. It's, it's not working as well as I hoped it would, so now I know. But after making the T groove, I went back and I routed out a groove underneath the T groove, or like in the middle of the T groove, all the way along, so the dust could leave in the future when it starts to build up as I'm turning the wood. Then I lifted up the whole thing again so dust would have some way of escaping the base and not get stuck into the grooves. The first two rest I made did not make me happy in any way. It was chunky, it didn't allow for angling of the tools and overall it just didn't look good. So I made this new one. It had a better overall height and it allowed me to angle the tools. and also show my ninja skills on how to just freeze when detecting a threat. Well, I was turning pine, so let's just say that that's the reason why this happened. It's definitely not because of my skills. So I tried oak and that's such good wood. To break this weak ass tool rest. So I went back to the scrap box and I found some stuff and I came up with this. A piece of rebar where I drilled and threaded the hole into it so this threaded rod could screw into it and I made sure to glue the threads so it wouldn't unscrew later on as I'm using it. The idea is that it goes into this base where I can lock it in both height and angle but first I need to grind off some of these bulky parts of the rebar. I might go back and remove more of the bulky parts later on though because it wasn't quite enough but you know sometimes you just settle with what you made because you don't really want to redo it at the moment. Well time to test it out. First in with the base then the rebar lock it down and oh it's complete garbage. Jesus. Well, I realized that maybe grinding the threaded rod into a hexagon shape instead of this circle would make it more prone to actually stay put. So I did. And it did stay put. And maybe you noticed that I actually also upgraded the base as well. And that was obviously all because of aesthetic and definitely not because I broke the other base. <clears throat> And time of truth, will it turn wood without breaking? I really need a scrubbing iron. 
uh, rough and gouge, uh, whatever. But for now, I have to settle with what I got. And after trying the lathe a bit, I can tell you that the tool rest is okay. It's a bit too flexible on the outer part, so I have to come up with something new later on. But for now, it's it's okay, and I can always adjust the tool rest to kind of have the sensor where I'm working. The tailstock, that's okay, but again, maybe a three-point piece will come in handy in the future. The head chuck is fine. It's easy to tighten and lock in place, and the jaws can be turned 180 degrees if needed. It did not go as planned. The mounts I use for the drill works fine, and so does the grooves that are made and the T-bolt and tailstock also. The only thing is the kind of flimsy tool rest that I might address later. So, if you're considering making a lathe like this, look for a drill that doesn't have the hammer function, as it, in my case at least, makes the drill chuck move back and forth. Also, look for a drill that has a variable speed, so you can set up maybe two or three different speeds that's easy to get or easy to set, so you at least have an idea what speed it's doing. Maybe something like 800, 1600, 2000 RPMs. I don't know. I'll show a chart on the screen that kind of give you a recommended speed for each diameter of work material. Also, consider have a kill switch or a safety switch near you in case something goes wrong. But then comes the question, is it even worth making a lathe instead of just buying one? Well, this one cost me about $45 to make. And I assume that you can find an old drill with a variable speed for about five, ten dollars, I don't know. Here in Denmark they don't cost much more than that. And the mounts for the drill can be made out of wood if you are creative enough, and if not, then you might find other ways to securely secure it to a base. I'm sure you'll find other ways to secure it if you don't have the right mounts. Now I don't know what you can find a lathe for in your countries, but here in Denmark the cheapest ones are about two hundred dollars, so Let's say that I saved $150, and to me, it's definitely worth it. But mainly because I rarely use a lathe, and you can probably achieve good results with this. But if you have my skill set, then maybe you should just outsource your lathe projects. So again, if your goal is to make a lathe to save money and do it cheap, and get a lathe for cheap, go for it. It's a fun and kind of easy tool to make. If you only want to use it from time to time, it might also be a good idea to just make it yourself. You can always upgrade into a real lathe later on. <laughs> but sometimes you should also just buy a tool. Buy a real tool instead of making one. But I assume you are capable of making your own decisions. Thanks for watching. Bye.